If you are trying to build a fan base on Spotify, one of the most important things you can do is to analyze the data so you can learn how your audience is interacting with your music. The best tool to do this is Spotify for Artists. And there's a ton of information that Spotify for Artists will give you, where your listeners are coming from, how many streams you have, and even how many people are following you. But there's a lot of information that Spotify for Artists leaves out, but that doesn't mean we can't figure it out. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the information that Spotify for Artists does give you and learn more about your audience than what they're showing. What's up guys, it's Tom. Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my life. Now today, I'm gonna to show you how to break down the information from Spotify for Artists to learn more about your audience on the platform. And speaking of Spotify for Artists, I wanna start this off by giving a shout out to the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. DistroKid is the best way to release music to Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, TikTok, and more. You get unlimited uploads, you get to keep 100% of your earnings, and they have more features than any other distributor. And one of my favorite features that they have is the ability to use Spotify for artists to get instantly verified on Spotify itself. With other platforms, you have to go through Spotify for artists directly, and there's a waiting period before you can claim your profile and get that little blue check mark at the top of it. With DistroKid, you don't have to go through Spotify for artists and play the waiting game. You can go directly through their platform and instantly get verified on Spotify. If you wanna give DistroKid a shot and you wanna get instantly verified on Spotify and get that awesome little blue check mark, hit the link in the description of this video and save yourself 7% when you sign up for the first year. Moving on, Spotify for artists, a lot of data there, lot to pick apart and a lot to uncover. There's a lot that is not listed on the page, but that doesn't mean we can't figure it out and use it to our advantage. So I'm going to show you how I take what Spotify for artists will give us and what I can calculate from that and how that's helpful as you grow your fan base. So let's dive into it. All right, we're here on the music page of Spotify for artists. And as you can see, here are all my releases and here's all the information for the past 28 days. There's a lot of really good, useful stuff in here. The stream count per song, the listener count per song, the saves per song. And you can switch stuff around. You can look at the last seven days. You can look at the last 24 hours. It's all really helpful. But there's some stuff in here we can use that isn't listed on the page. And that's where this awesome spreadsheet comes in. So this is the spreadsheet that is picking apart all of the analytics for my most recent release must be dreaming. Technically not most recent. I just dropped a song called We Can Run. If you want to check that out, link in the description of this video. Shameless, I don't care. This song must be dreaming is a song that came out before that. And the reason I want to share this spreadsheet is because it's got a complete table of data in it. Whereas We Can Run has just started. So I'm still recording the data in that spreadsheet. So for must be dreaming, I recorded a ton of stuff. All the stuff that is in a gray cell is information that Spotify has given me from Spotify for artists. So if we go to the last, you know, if we go to the last 24 hours here on must be dreaming, you can see that I've gotten 90 streams, 56 listeners and saves are not listed for the past 24 hour period. I don't know why that is, but they just don't do it. Going over here, this is not consistent with today, but when I first started recording data for that song, on the first day, I had 49 streams and 31 listeners. And from that, I'm able to calculate my stream rate. And what is a stream rate? The stream rate is basically how many times each listener is listening to the song. A higher stream rate is better. In this case, for the first day, I had a stream rate of 1.58. And we calculate that by dividing the number of streams by the number of listeners. And you want this to go up over time. Let's go down to the seven day window. Again, you go back to Spotify for artists and same thing. We go to last seven days and now we can see saves as well. So we go back to the table and you can see I've recorded the same thing, streams, listeners, but then I've also got saves. I've got my stream rate for the past seven days. Then I've got my save rate and we calculate the save rate by dividing the number of saves by the number of streams. And what the save rate basically tells us is that this is the number of streams it took for one save to happen of the song. So how many streams 
resulted in a save. And what you want is people saving your songs and listening to it in their own profile. And then you want them following your profile. These are two of the best things you can do. And on top of that, you want people listening to the song more than once. So a higher stream rate means people are listening to the song on repeat and a higher save rate means they've saved that song and they're listening to it on repeat in their library, which is awesome. These are both things that show you that your music is attractive to these listeners and it's doing well. We calculate all of this over time. I've calculated it out for four weeks. And then we come down here to the next set of rows and I've got for the last 28 days. So again, you go to the drop down menu here. You can see what's happening for the last 28 days. Going back here, I record that every single day as well. The reason I record it for this amount of time is because what you want to see is these numbers gradually increase. Now, when you go to the 24 hour period here, it's going to fluctuate. It's not going to consistently just go up. In fact, none of this is going to consistently just go up. But what you want is that long trend over time to sort of be growing as time moves forward. So the 24 hour period is going to fluctuate. That's going to happen. But hopefully the seven day window will go up or at least stay largely consistent. And the 28 day window will go up as well. Let's just take the stream rate for the 28 day period. It stayed relatively the same for the first 10 days or so. And then it started to go up a little bit, which is great. And in fact, it kept going up for the last two weeks of the release. And then for the save rate, it stayed pretty consistently the same. It went up, stayed consistently the same for a couple weeks. And then as I tapered off my ad spend, it started to go back down, which is to be expected. This next set of rows, source of streams. If I go back to Spotify for artists and I click on must be dreaming after we get past this little table here, we come down to source of streams last 28 days. The reason I record this every single day in the spreadsheet is because this only reports on a 28 day cycle. So you can't break it down by 24 hours. You can't break it down by seven days like you can with the other statistics. So it's important to me to record this so I can see how my listener base is changing their habits over time with relation to the song. So your profile, this is the number of people who are listening on my profile. I want this number to go down because I want the listener's library number to go up. And I also want the algorithmic playlist number to go up. The profile went down over time. The listener's library went up over time. And then the algorithmic playlists kind of shot myself in the foot on this one. It stayed the same, went up a little bit, came back down. I changed my artist name in the middle of this release. So I really kind of shot myself in the foot as far as getting on algorithmic playlists are concerned. If you want to learn more about that, about changing your artist name, you can check out this video right here. It actually went off without a hitch, but I just happened to do it in the middle of a release cycle, which hindsight being 2020, maybe not the best move, but it is what it is. The next thing I want to show you that I track is number of playlists. This is also a really good indicator that your song is performing well with your audience. You want this number to go up over time too. And as you can see with Must Be Dreaming, it did. Every single day I added a couple of, at least a couple of playlists to the number, the total number of playlists over time. That's all the per song data. And everything in blue is what we are calculating based on the data, which is in gray, that Spotify for artists will give us. Now let's go over here to global metrics. This whole next table is global metrics. This is what I take from here. My audience tab where I get my listeners for the past 24 hours, streams and my number of followers. And I calculate things very similarly down here. So you've got listeners, streams and followers total. And every day I tally the number of followers in total, and then I calculate the number of new followers. And that tells me how quickly people are coming to my profile and sticking around. Every follower is going to be around for the next release. So you want people following. Every single follower is a new release radar playlist to be added on, on week one. And the next thing I calculate is follower ratio. And I calculate this by dividing the total number of followers by the total number of listeners. And basically what this tells me is of the people who are listening to my music on this day, how many of them are followers? Now it's not a one-to-one -one thing. It's not every single of person of these 42% is actively listening that day of my followers, but it's a good metric to have because you want it to go up over time as with everything else. That tells you that the people who are following you are continuing to listen to your music. They're not giving you an empty follow and then never coming back. And then just like with the per song metrics, 
I record the source of streams, listeners, gender, and listeners age every single day because it's also listed on a 28 day cycle in Spotify for artists. So it's important to grab it day of, otherwise you're never gonna get that data again. And the reason I like this information is because it tells me whether or not what's happening on Spotify is consistent with what's happening in my Facebook ad spend. Which brings me to the next part. We come down here to ad metrics. Now I track a lot of stuff with ads. I'll just show you what I've got in here real quickly. This is all from Facebook ads, and I've got my ad spend, link clicks, landing page views, conversions, and then from there, I calculate cost per click, landing page view, cost, and cost per conversion. All that's available in Facebook ads too. It's just easier to have the table do it for me. I've got my click-through rate. My video plays at 95%. I'm also keeping track of my custom conversions for my landing page, Spotify link click, and Apple Music link click by using the links that have my Facebook pixel embedded in them, which I do with a platform called Pixel Me. You can check out a video here for more information on how I do that. And then from there, I double check everything with Google Analytics and track again, the landing page views, the link clicks and the Apple Music link clicks. All of this information helps me to have a much clearer picture and a much clearer understanding of A, who my followers are, who my listeners are, and B, how am I performing over time? Over time is a very important measure to a very important lens to look at your artist growth through. You want to see that the things you're doing are working. And if they're not working, you need to know so that you can change them. By using all of this information, I'm able to better tell which songs are performing better than others, how my audience is responding to them over time. Do they like this song? Do they not like this song? Is my ad structure working for this release better than it worked for the previous release? This is all really good information to have. And so I encourage you to record this data every day if you're serious about growing your fan base. I think it's important to know exactly where your listenership is coming from and how they're engaging with your craft. And one more thing, I'm happy to share this spreadsheet template if you want it. I'm not gonna list it when I publish this video, but if you do want a copy of it, comment on this video and let me know that you want a template of this spreadsheet so you don't have to set it up yourself. If enough of you comment on this video and tell me that you want it, then I will pin a comment and include the link in the description of this video to give you this exact template that I use for my releases. That's it for this video. I hope it helps. Some stuff at the end here if you want to check that out as always. And as always, thanks for being here. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.